Hey guys, this is Heather. So I'm just heading out to run some errands, and as some of you may know from previous videos, I cycle commute. So I ride a bicycle. I do not drive a car, I don't drive a motorcycle, I ride a bicycle. <laughs> I love it. So I've been doing this since, let's see, 2002. So that's 15 years now. Wow, that's a long time. Um, I started in 2002 because I was in university. My car was dying. It was a car that my parents gave me to use while I was at university and it was already however many years old. And um, so it was dying a slow, painful death. It was costing a lot in maintenance and it got to a point where I was gonna have to put more into the car than it was worth. So at that point I realized, you know, I'm gonna have to cut this car off, unfortunately. Um, and I couldn't afford to buy a car. I couldn't afford to lease a car. I couldn't afford maintenance, I couldn't afford insurance on a car. I just knew there was absolutely no way that I could afford a car. So I started thinking about bicycling because it costs a lot less, there's no insurance, there's very little maintenance and all the maintenance you can do yourself so all you have to do is buy the parts. And I could get a little bit of exercise while I was doing it. So it seemed like a win-win. I bought a bike which at the time was the most expensive thing I had ever bought. It was $350, I think. And there goes a motorcycle right by me. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I was, this was a major decision for me, but obviously a lot less major than buying a car. And so I bought this bike and I thought, okay, before my car has to be taken to the scrapyard, I'll buy this bike so I can kind of ease myself into it. Great thought in theory, but you know what? I never, I never bicycled to school or to where I was working or where I was taking lessons. Uh, I never bicycled until my car was actually gone. Because when I had the choice to cycle versus drive, I always chose to drive. I was always scrambling, I was always running behind, I was always running late, um, so I always drove when I had the choice. Suddenly, when I didn't have the choice anymore, then I started cycling. Then I started to love it. And I have not gone back. I've not owned a car since then. Um, I have driven cars here and there when I'm visiting people, when I'm visiting my parents. I might use their car to get around. But for myself, I've always managed to get myself to live in a place where I can cycle commute. And that's been a conscious choice. So I've always chosen to live downtown so that I can walk or cycle everywhere or take public transit. Um, and so I just wanted to share a few of the things that I love about bicycle commuting. So that if any of you are thinking of making that shift as we move into better weather, it gets easier to think about cycle commuting. So some of the things I love now, um, I love that I'm using my muscles and I'm burning calories instead of burning gasoline. That to me is a huge motivating factor for sticking with cycle commuting. That wasn't as much of a factor to me when I started, it is now. The environmental impact of cycling versus driving, huge. So I can be burning my own energy instead of fossil fuel energy. There was a time when I was cycle commuting and I would actually go up the bicycle trail and over an overpass on the highway and I would get to just soar over the gridlock on the highway. And it made me feel so much better being able to cycle my way to work and back rather than being stuck in traffic all the time. So there are often shortcuts that you can take as a cyclist and they can help you actually make about the same amount of travel time when you, when you don't have to factor in traffic. If I get a flat tire on my bike, I can change it myself, right at the side of the road. I carry spare tubes, I carry all the tools that I need in my bag, so I don't have to call CAA or AAA or the people who come out and help you fix the flat tire. I don't have to pay a mechanic to do it, I can do it myself. So that's not only really gratifying in feeling self-sufficient, but it also saves me money in cost of labor for mechanics. Minor maintenance issues I can take care of myself. And I've been slowly learning more and more about bike maintenance as I go on. Uh, there are lots of things that I don't know. So there are still things that I might have to take it to a bicycle shop for. But again, it usually costs a lot less because it takes less time to do it. So there's less labor involved in fixing 
a bicycle. Also, parts usually cost less for a bicycle. Not always true. Some things cost more. In some ways, bicycles are more expensive depending on what kind of bicycle you get. So the super expensive ones obviously have really specialized components and parts, but that's not the kind of bike that I have. Another aspect that really appeals to me is being that girl that gets to work on her bicycle and people say, wow, you biked here? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> there, there is a sense of being that person who is dedicated enough to cycle to work or wherever it is that you're going. Uh, when I was in university, my instructors would be so impressed with my dedication to getting on time, to getting there on time, uh, even when I was bicycling. So there's that aspect. There's also the community aspect of cycle commuters. We get to know each other. Uh, there was one place where I was living where I was always going on the same path at the same time of day. So I got to know all the other commuters. You know, everybody was on the trail at the same time every day. We get to know each other just by those little nods you give along the trail. And there was a difference in the summer and the winter cycle commuters. So those of us hardcore enough to keep cycle commuting in the winter, we would really get to know each other because we know, yeah. You're that person who sticks with it year round. So there are lots of benefits to cycle commuting. And if you are thinking of doing this, there are a few things to keep in mind. One is obviously safety. You can maybe hear the road traffic right beside me. Um, that does play a huge factor in cycle commuting. So you wanna be safe. Don't always hug the very side of the road. You know, go a little bit into the lane so that people don't just nip by you and, and try to cut you off. Um, take the space that you need to feel safe. Also lighting, super important. I've got these really amazing lights on my bike, both rear and front. I've got a front light that is so bright that it might be confused for a motorbike light. And my rear light actually has indicators and it has a little laser beam that goes out to tell cars not to get too close to you at night. So those can be really, really helpful. Also, signal everywhere you can, uh, just with your arm, putting your arms out. Um, and give the cars behind you time. So if you're turning um, into oncoming traffic, you wanna give them time to know that you're gonna do that. And if cars are behind you, they might be waiting to pass. So make sure you give them enough time when you signal so that they don't try to pass you as you're slowing down to make your turn. Helmets, of course, are key. I know they're not mandatory everywhere, but why not wear a helmet? They've even got inflatable helmets now. You can put like a little collar on, and then if, the, if it senses that you're spinning in, in a direction that you wouldn't expect, it inflates automatically and covers your whole head. And then a few tips that have made cycle commuting more functional for me are bags. So I used to always use a backpack when I was cycle commuting. And this is a great cycle backpack. It's got a place for me to hook a light on. It's got reflective surfaces. It's got pockets in the side that I can reach into while I'm cycling or if I get off and I don't want to take my whole pack off. Um, so this was great, but I started to get neck and shoulder pain. So I've moved to a pannier now, which is this bag that hooks onto the back of my bike. Fantastic, love it. I can fit a lot of stuff in there and it doesn't weigh down my shoulders. You can also go with a shoulder bag like this, a little more stylish, but still functional. This one um, has a loop as well for your bike light. And the key with a shoulder bag is that you need to have some kind of um, strap that keeps it in front of you so that when you stop suddenly, it doesn't swing around and hit your bike or hit your handlebars or throw you off balance or anything like that. So I can show you what I keep in my pannier. So this is always in my bag when I go anywhere. I've got a lock. I've got a shopping bag for impromptu shopping trips. I've got a travel um, pump. So if I get a flat, I can pump my tire up at least enough to get me home. I've got gloves for rainy days. These are actually paddling gloves. They're not cycling gloves. They work great. I've got my maintenance bag in here. I've got a spare tube. I've got a charging cable for my lights. I've got a patch kit. I've got tire levers and I've got a tool, multi-tool, which you can use to, to 
do all sorts of functions on your bike. I've also got some bungee cords. So sometimes I find when I go grocery shopping, I get stuff like lettuce. It's too big to fit in here with everything else. So I put my lettuce right here and then I just bungee it down so that it doesn't fall off. I've got a waterproof cover for my pannier that came with it. I've also got this fell out. This is an arm band light. So I just put that around my arms so that when I signal at night, people can see me. And this is probably the coolest bit. I've got a little mirror that snaps onto my helmet so that I can see behind me. So I just do that and then I can see the cars behind me. These clip-on shoes have made such a huge difference in the amount of energy that I have to exert to cycle to work, especially when I'm going up hills. Now, these you have to be careful of because you do have to clip out of them. And I have fallen a few times when I haven't clipped out quick enough. Um, as you wear them more, you get used to them more and they wear down a little bit so they're easier to unclip. You can set them on a very low tension at first to get used to them so that they unclip pretty easily. Um, so consider these. They're not necessary, but they do really improve your efficiency. Clothing choices can be important. I have full rain gear that I wear for cycling if it's wet out. I used to even have uh, shoe covers to keep my feet dry when I was going to work. Now I wear the clip shoes so it doesn't matter quite as much and I bring a change of socks. Um, but uh, those, those were really helpful at the time. And uh, in, in normal circumstances, I always wear sunglasses, even if it's not really sunny out because they stop um, bugs or dust or stuff that's coming off trucks from going in my eyes too much. As I am now riding an hour and a half total back and forth to work, I've got an electric motor on my bike to help me up the hills and to help me uh, into wind. So this is the motor right here. This is the battery. It's pedal assist, so it doesn't make me go. It just assists when I'm pedaling really hard. It helps make it easier so that I get to work and I'm not a sweaty mess. Now, the downsides I often hear about cycle commuting, uh, don't I need a shower when I get to work? Well, yeah. I have in the past uh, just used the regular washroom to clean myself off, just my face uh, and it's usually my armpits, um, which isn't the greatest, but it works. And in the big scheme, I'm happy to do that if it means that I'm not using gasoline and I'm getting some exercise and I'm saving some money, significant amount of money. Uh, now I'm lucky enough to have a shower at work. So if you have a gym in town near your office or any access to a shower near your office, then maybe look into that. Otherwise, you can, you can try makeshift solutions. Um, takes too much time. So I think of it as time to think time to exercise, uh, time to enjoy the outdoors. So when I think about the time that I take on my bike, it's multi-purpose. So it's not just my commute to work, it's multi-purpose. Also, it only takes me about 10 minutes longer to get to work than it would if I was driving. So in, in the big scheme, check what the actual difference is in time. Uh, what are some other ones? It, I'll be too tired when I get to work, so that's where an electric motor assist can really, really help. Um, you can even charge that up at work so that you reduce the amount of electricity that you're increasing at home. Um, and what else? Uh, well, some people just can't cycle and that's fine. Um, if you have a disability, if you uh, need to go to, to various site visits or office visits or anything like that, if you need to get around while you're at work and a bicycle doesn't work, then yeah, no, that doesn't make sense. But for those of you who do have the option, highly recommend you give it a try. If you need to only do it in the summer, if the winter you're not able to cycle, that's fine too. Um, but if anybody has any questions about cycle commuting, please leave them down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you're a cycle commuter and you love it, please share what you love about it. And if you have any, uh, any suggestions or tips, leave me a thumbs up. If you like the concept, if you like the video, and be sure to subscribe to my channel for new videos every week with vegan recipes, nutrition tips, inspiration, and random stuff like bicycle commuting. All right, if you're subscribed, we'll talk soon. Bye guys.